All right, so hey, we'll move back to the Dalai Lama, and he will give us pick number four for him. Oh my god! I, I, all right, let me. Let me I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Better write it down. Hold on a sec. Um, no, 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 no big. Oh yeah, number four. Number four. Number four. Yeah, number four is. Oh, I I picked my friend David Dorico. And, and I'm David, not saying a bad word about Dave because Dave is an awesome mean dude. He, well, I, I put, you are absolutely right. He is a great guy. And if I'm going to do a list of captains, I'm going to pick, I want to at least pick one friend, right? So I picked David Dorico. He was the, he was captain four times for the U S national team. He played 19 times, scored 18 times, right? Between 1974 and 1977. Now in 1974, the NASL was in full swing. And the NS the NASL draft, he was the overall, he was the original Seattle Sounder picked. So mm -hmm. if so again, and, and and I say this, um I say this because I think that as a friend of mine, he should be recognized more, right? I mean, if you're I mean, we know how rabid Seattle Seattle Sounders fans are, right? And yeah. I'm kind of shocked that he's not a household name with them. He was yeah. a captain, you know, in, for the U.S. national team at the at you know, during the qualifiers, you know, in, for 1978, right, for the World Cup. And of course, they didn't make it; it's not his fault. But this is the kind of guy that I think personifies the grit of American soccer. This is a guy that grew up in the streets of New Jersey, right? He was coached by the Carney, sort of the legendary Carney coaches from from back in the day. He went to college at uh, at Hartford, excuse me, Hartwick, part of me, Hartwick. I keep getting those mixed up. Sorry, Hartwick guys. Hartwick. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's a huge 70s college. And I like the guy. I, I think he's, he should be, he should be a household name. There should be interviews with him all the time. And of course there's captains that have got more caps and so on and so forth. But I think the background from David Dorico, the fact that he came from, again, quote unquote, the streets, I'm not, you know, and then moved up and did all the stuff, had a great career, played indoor soccer. Why this guy is not more famous, I don't know, but I wanted to put him as number four just because I think he deserves to be somewhere on this list. I love it. I love it. And, you know, you're right about Dave. He's a great guy. He's been a big supporter of the show, even yes. going way back when. He's very active on Facebook, too. He's super nice. Yeah. And if you don't know him, you know, note to self, Derek, have Dave on show. Okay. Yeah. Notes are on it. Yeah. All right, Brett, you're number four. <clears throat> oh, yeah. My my number four is going to be uh, uh, Landon Donovan. A, a, a kind of well-known character. Yeah. And um, I, I think he's on your list too, Simon, isn't he? He's my number three, so I agree. Go for it, yes. I'm the only one that dissed him. All right, go ahead. Well, Bob. I mean, I, and I'm going to bring up a point why you may have, but I mean, quite frankly, he, during his tenure, he was the heart of the team, and he demanded respect from both foe and um, uh, teammate. Mm -hmm. However, the reason I think maybe you may have dissed him, Derek, is that he tended to disappear in games. And he would just yeah, go for a number of a number of games, and then he would yeah. show up and do something. But then he would ghost the rest of the game, and you wouldn't hear from him. So I, I put him there primarily because, you know, for what a couple decades there, he was he was he was a major part of the team. And when he became captain, I mean, he just he had the respect of everybody. And if you told him to do something, they did it. So yeah, how about four. how about you, Simon? Would you put him on four? I, I I put him on because quite simply, he's the best American soccer player ever sorry clint dempsey fans sorry chris p fans sorry whoever whatever fan he is the, he is the best player that the u.s has produced and i and i say that with absolute respect for you know and i and i say this rarely but with absolute respect for the img academy i say this the fact that he went to byron leverkusen and had a really and struggled you know and didn't do well there and we they, they people know just how much he missed home came back absolutely became a, a legend for for the domestically as well as for the national team won 
um, won trophies with LA Galaxy, obviously, and um, San Jose, Jose, right? Jose, yep. right? Yeah. People gave him so much shit for not going to Europe. Like, he's not going to be a legend because he didn't go to Europe. Like, yeah, the, he went, like he, the name, he had the kid. nickname Landy Cakes. Right, which yeah. is total, I think, bullshizzle because he, there's an L in front of his name and there's a D at the end of his name and inside the middle is, is legend, right? Because he went, <laughs> he went to Everton, right? He went to Everton and he became, he was just as good at Everton as he ever was at the Galaxy. I agree. He's going yeah. to Mexico, right? The Landy Cakes one is total bullshizzle. It's, it's literally for folks who probably don't know enough about soccer to understand that you know he was he was kept in the United States because he was such an asset to, to domestic to domestic soccer, but he could have gone anywhere, and that he could he was absolutely wanted by just absolutely more like better clubs than 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 Everton wanted him, but he 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 was he was uh, I think forced to stay here, and the fact that he and I think what at at what age sixty he was playing for the San Diego Soccers I don't know what that <laughs> whatever it was I don't know but he was still playing and. But more importantly, guys, and, and this is where I want to sort of maybe get, well, I do want to get your opinion. This this player moved from the U-17s all the way to the, to the senior national team. He was a product of U.S. soccer, right? That, to me, he was the, 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 the first guy or the first player to go through this system and show people, yeah, man, yeah, you can go to Europe for a couple of years, but as long as you go through the system and you're good, you can become a, a fantastic player. And I don't think there's been a player like that, right? I mean, that, Chris well, Pease that, that, isn't, isn't like that. that. same U17 team that uh, had DeMarcus Beasley, and he went, he did the same thing. Okay, DeMarcus Beasley, I, I get it. DeMarcus Beasley, I get it. I mean, he, by the way, that's another unsung hero that no yeah. one really talks about, right? So uh, I'm yeah. not gonna argue that he's not a good player, but he's sure. just one of those guys It's like, yeah, DeMarcus Beasley, I mean, I think what? Dozy said something about DeMarcus Beasley like a couple of weeks ago on Twitter and it caused a stir. He, he he is a great player, but Landon Donovan, um, on the flip side, people don't talk about, you know, DeMarcus Beasley, but on, but on the on the other flip side, people just badmouth Landon Donovan and it's, it's just it's the wrong thing. The guy is a legend. And by the way, he you know, he was playing three years ago for the national team. He was playing indoor soccer, right? Yeah. So I don't know, man. So, yeah. I, I, and by the way, 2002, when he scored a goal against Portugal at the World Cup and just shrugged his shoulders and went, yeah, I'm going to score against Portugal. <laughs> it's classic. Legend, yeah. legend, right? And the whole putting on the sunglasses while taking a corner kick. Legend. legend. If we're going to talk, talk about goals for him, let's talk about the Algeria goal, too. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah, that legend. is the serious goal. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> right. Yeah. The Algeria goal, which which should be on the top of the, every highlight reel for the U.S. national team, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, if not number one, you know, top, right? So yeah, I mean, the fact that there's better captains in my and on my list than your list, brand new, probably your list too, is is understandable. But as a player, as a, a, an icon of American soccer, I just don't think it gets much better than this. And by the way, have I, have you noticed that no one's really comparing? Chris P to Landon Donovan. I'm I don't know. I don't know so why. So glad they're not. Yeah, I don't, I don't know see. why, but yeah, I, I'm so glad. But I think that there, there, there is a comparison to be made, but not quite yet. But I think Landon Donovan is so far ahead right now in the terms of legendary status that people are sort of holding off. Yeah, I think that's true. I, I agree with everything both of you said. Uh, I guess I left him off because. If you were to ask me who are the top five players in U.S. men's national team history, obviously he's making that. But as a captain, I wasn't sold, and I'm okay. Uh, but with that, I don't need him to be the captain. And um, so I guess that's why I left him off. I guess yeah. it's my my turn to go for it. <laughs> yeah. fourth, my fourth was Clint Dempsey. That's my uh, third. And so I guess we'll just cover that both. And the reason I picked Clint is, yeah, he did have more um, picks as the captain for the United States national team. Um, he took over after Boca Negra, essentially. And uh, he was a great captain through the 2014 World Cup team, which I thought did okay based on the talent they had. Um, got us out of the group of death with, you know, Ghana, Germany, and Portugal. So that's why I've got Clint on my fourth. How about you, Brett? 
Well, I mean, he, he's he's obviously he's a very vocal player, um, and that's that's definitely an uh, important thing when it comes to a, a captain. Out, outside of possibly leaving it all on the field and uh, leading by example, uh, being vocal is definitely key. Um, plus, he's also one of the first players that'll step up um, at a player's defense. I mean, yeah. if, if there if there's ever a scuffle, Dempsey's there. It was like, and we had two of those enforcers during most of Dempsey's late run there, which was Dempsey and Jones. Both of those guys, not going to give you an inch. So, so let's, let's, I guess we could add Gooch into that too. Yeah, Gooch was pretty good at that too. Yeah. 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 But uh, right. also, also just his swagger. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. We well, have have we had have we had a, a player as cocky as him since him? Probably not. Oh, I can't. Now. Yeah. No. There's, yeah, but there's no reason to be cocky. If you're playing for the U.S. national team, <laughs> well, <laughs> right? You, need, you do need to have a, somebody on the team with a pair of brass ones. Somebody. I know, on the I know, but how how cocky can you get when you're losing to Trinidad and Tobago, right? <laughs> Unfortunately for Clint, that was on the tail end of his career. I know, I know, I, know, I get he, it, but just saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 